since its release in February of this year, I've continued to use Binary Ninja's Sidekick plugin that is developed by Vector35, which leverages large language models in order to assist with the reverse engineering process. Namely, I've been using it for reverse engineering a number of malware variants throughout our stream series and assisting with my scripting automation process. In August of this year, they released version 2.0 of Binary Ninja Sidekick, which has a large number of interesting functionality changes that I wanted to highlight in this video. So today we're going to look at a ransomware sample that we looked at on stream, the Donex ransomware, and we're going to see what the Sidekick plugin can assist us with. So here I have a fresh Binary Ninja database of the Donex ransomware sample that we analyzed on stream. And I've opened a new database just so any markups that we previously made won't be assisting the large language models when we interact with them. So the next thing that I'm going to do is open up one of the major changes in version 2.0 of Sidekick, which is the analysis workbench. And you can do this by just clicking on this icon in the bottom right here, Sidekick Analysis Workbench. And then this opens up the analysis workbench pane here. So from this workbench, I can create new automation scripts in order to interact with the database using large language models. And in order to do this, I can simply type in a task that I want to do within this search bar here that's already selected. So say I wanted to find all cryptographic functions within this database. I could just say find all cryptographic functions in this database and then hit enter. And this is using the Sidekick large language model in order to generate the code that we're going to be using to interact with the database with other large language models. So this might be a bit confusing, but they've done some pretty interesting work here in order to not only be able to produce Binary Ninja Python automation on the fly, but also give the ability for their Python API to interact with other large language models when it's performing certain tasks. So here we can see within the Python code, there is this LLM operator object, and then it's being passed this phrase, is this function a cryptographic function? And then that's being assigned to this variable is crypto function. And then here you can see that there is this with open index. So indexes are a another important piece of Binary Ninja Sidekick that I did not cover in the first video, but this is a whole piece of the Binary Ninja Sidekick ecosystem that we will be leveraging today. It acts as a data store that you can add to, delete, and change while you're interacting with Sidekick. So if we look in the top left here, I have the indexes currently open. There is nothing populated there right now because we have not added anything to it. But if I were to run this task by clicking on run, then we can see that this is building a script. So I will show you what that's doing in a second, but this is actually creating a large language model template that is interacting with the Sidekick large language model in order to produce findings for us. So as you might see here in the top left, the indexes are being populated. And then in the bottom here, we have a progress bar that's updating us on the progress of our automation that's being executed here. So if I make a little bit more room here, the other functionality within the script that is being executed currently is this for loop that is enumerating all the defined functions within the database. And then we have this notify progress, which is just updating this progress bar as this functionality executes. And then we have the result that's being returned by this is crypto function, which is again, our LLM operator here. And then finally, the result is then acquired by using this dot get here and then passing this is crypto, which is effectively a Boolean that will be false by default. And then each result that is acquired is then set into our index using this index.add entry. And then we have a description that is statically set to cryptographic function currently. So this is all well and good, but we only have the description of cryptographic function. So for now, I'm going to hit cancel on our operation here. And then we can see a exception is being produced in the bottom here, but that's okay. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is make changes to the script. But a very interesting piece of functionality that was added to this version of Sidekick 
is the ability to interact with the script directly by using this sidekick coding assistant. So as you can see here in the top right, we have find all cryptographic functions in this database. And then the coding assistant here stated, the script iterates over all defined functions in the binary using the sidekick API. And it uses the LLM operator to determine if each function is cryptographic and stores the result in an index for easy browsing. Progress is notified to the user during the analysis. So if we want to make the output of this more verbose, then we can actually ask the sidekick coding assistant to simply code that for us. So say I want the reasoning behind this, add the reasoning to the index. And then as we can see here, the LLM operator changed to is this function a cryptographic function, provide the reasoning. And then down here in this result.get that we looked at earlier, we can see that index.add entry has two entries, which is the description, which is that static one that we saw earlier, and then the reasoning, which is acquired from the large language model template that I'll show you in a second. And then the next really cool thing that we can do is assign a confidence level to the function identified. So how confident the large language model is that the identified function contains cryptographic operations. And then we can only add the functions identified with high confidence to our index. So I found doing this will highly lower the amount of noise when interacting with these large language models because they can be false positive prone at times. So then I can say add confidence to the index and then we can see now that we have the confidence as well. And then we can also see that our LLM operator has changed to provide reasoning and confidence. And then I can say only add functions to the index that are high confidence. And then we can see here that the result.getConfidence is being called in this if statement here. And then we're only adding this function to an index if that confidence is indeed high. So what are these values that are being acquired and passed here? So if we look at this other tab here, so this operator, then we can see a number of different things. So we have the task, which is, is this function a cryptographic function? And then we have these input variables, which is essentially a JSON block that's being provided to this large language model prompt down here. And this contains the different types of variables that are being passed to the prompt. So first we have the code listing, which is the high level intermediate language code listing here, since the IL type is set to HLIL. And then we have a static window size. So for things like the string listing, the max number of strings here is set to 100, since there could be many strings within this binary that are being passed to the large language model. And then if I scroll down here, we can see that the type is a user model, and then the model name is Sidekick. So I don't have any other models currently enabled, but if I was to click up here, we can actually enable a large amount of different models for this LLM operator to interact with. So currently we have Sidekick that is currently enabled, and this is going to simply use the Sidekick large language model that is very good at identifying certain tasks. But if say we had a Anthropic account and we wanted to leverage these Claude models or a ChatGPT account, then we can use those as well. And what's also very interesting that I have not been able to test out yet locally is you can even use things like the Llama model, Meta Llama 3.18b instruct, and then even the smaller models that are vectorized that can run on a single laptop. So I am going to test these out in the future. It's just a matter of me getting them up and running so I can test them out with my Sidekick installation on my Apple MacBook Pro. That is a M2, which therefore has enough video memory for me to have these large language models running in memory. So with that out of the way, I'm just gonna hide this again. And basically that's what the model name would be selected in this dropdown here. And then this is effectively the prompt that's being provided to the large language model. So here it says instructions, you are an AI assistant specialized in identifying cryptographic functions in code. Analyze the following function to determine if it's likely to be a cryptographic operation. Again, we have that input code listing. So that's going to be the HLIL for a given function. And then we have our strings listing here. And then we have in your analysis, consider the following aspects and then basically 
basically it provides a number of aspects that it should be considering when analyzing a given functions code for cryptographic operations. And then we have a scratch pad section defined down here that we don't have to worry about right now. And then we have a output schema. So we have our is crypto Boolean. We have the confidence level and then we have the reasoning. So that's being passed back to our script here. And then that's being what's set into the index. So what's crazy about all of this is all of these things were produced by the large language model in question. I didn't write any of this. This was not hard coded by the Vector35 folks. All of this was produced by the Sidekick large language model. So that's pretty cool. So now that we've added these additional entries to the index, now I'm gonna hit run again. And you'll notice that we'll probably get less entries this time, simply because the first ones that we identified were not high confidence. Whereas now we should only get a smaller subset and a less noisy subset of functions that are high confidence based on the large language model interpretation. So as this is populating, we can see that we have a number of different fields within our cryptographic functions index. So we can see we have the confidence, the description, which is set to that static string. So we don't really need that. And then we have the reasoning for each function being identified here. So if we look at a number of these, and if I make a little bit more room for these cell contents, then we can see that if we select any of these cell contents, then this gives us the reasoning why that it identified that this was a cryptographic operation. And if I select this line here, we can see that it says the function exhibits multiple characteristics typical of cryptographic functions, including the presence of bitwise operations, particularly XOR repetitive operations, indicative of rounds and context suggesting manipulation of data likely linked to security features such as mutex handling. So if we look at the function here, so I'm going to double click on this sub 4030D0, then we can see that there is indeed some cryptographic operations happening here. And these are these XOR operations. So whenever I'm looking at a piece of malware and I see interesting XOR loops, like this, then I'm always wondering what exactly is happening here. And if I click on any of these addresses that are being XORed with these XMEM registers, then we can see seemingly invalid data, which tells me this is probably encrypted in some way, shape or form. And if I hit escape here, then we can go to this data 4295D0 variable. And then this has all these A9s here. So this is probably performing some type of decryption. So say I wanted to decrypt this data statically, I didn't wanna run this dynamically myself, I can actually get Sidekick to write this code for me. So say I wanted to produce Python code that was equivalent to this, I can go to our Sidekick assistant here, then I can say something like, can you re-implement the code from address there to there. So at the end of our for loop, okay, so it's implemented the code with the respective addresses, etc. It looks like it did not do this in Python. So I'm just going to say, can you port this to the binary ninja Python API? And then it looks like this is a little bit complex, but effectively it's doing the XOR operations that we see in the high level intermediate language there with the respective addresses. So I'm going to copy this and we don't need this from binary ninja import binary view function. So I'm gonna copy this, put it in our code editor here within our analysis workbench. And then I'm gonna hit run. And then here the binary ninja sidekick chat assistant has said BV and func is your current function object. But I just wanna see what that's being used for and it doesn't look like that's being used for anything. So I'm not quite sure why the large language model added that, but we can just get rid of that here and then in our call here. And BV is already gonna be defined in our current Python environment, but then I'm gonna hit run. And then if we look up here, we can already see these bytes have changed. But if I double click on this address, then we can see that this is the decrypted ransomware configuration here within our binary view. So not only were we able to identify this location of the cryptographic operation, but we were also able to create automation to decrypt the configuration on the fly and see what data was in there. So if I wanted to clean this up a little bit, I could just do something like get the full length 
which is 217E. And then if I navigate here, I can just change this array length to 217E. And then here we can see the full configuration here. So finding that initial cryptographic operation location was a little bit cumbersome in those tables, but that's where a, another piece of very interesting functionality comes in, which if I go back here and I go to the start function, then we can open a view called the code insight map. So this effectively provides a call graph that can apply the contents within our indices that were identified with our large language model. So if I go to the nodes here, then I can select cryptographic functions. So this is the index that we identified earlier. And then, so we can set the call depth to a higher amount in order to get the calls that occur after start. So here we can see that we have our start function. So this would be the address of entry point within our portable executable. Then this sub 412C62 is called. Then we have this sub 4035C0 that leads to a number of different functions that have been identified as cryptographic operations. So if we look at these nodes here, these have the index column contents within them. So we have this 403, 0D0, and it says cryptographic functions, description, cryptographic function, reasoning, the function exhibits multiple characteristics, which includes the presence of bitwise operations, particularly XOR. So this is the same one that we looked at earlier. And then we can also look at the interoperations with calls to functions that have also been identified as cryptographic operations. So this sub 401A30, so if I make a little bit more room here, we can see this function includes multiple characteristics of cryptographic functions, including bitwise XOR. And additionally, there are calls to function names and constants that hint at encryption, such as RSA encrypt. And if I go there, then we can see that there is indeed this function call here that is past the string RSA encrypt. So. If we wanted to investigate this further, this would be a great starting point in order to do that. And then there are a number of other nodes that again, call seemingly interesting cryptographic operations here. So this particular sample also embeds a cryptographic library that it uses to perform some of its cryptographic operations. So this particular type of LLM operator task is going to yield a large amount of results for this particular sample. And again, these are only the high confidence functions that were identified by our large language model. And this would help us during our triage process. And we don't have to look at each of these functions individually in order to get a high level understanding of them from a cryptographic operation standpoint that we can leverage this code insight map for. So that's basically what I wanted to cover today. Really cool things coming out of Vector35. They're leading the way, in my opinion, of leveraging large language models within the reverse engineering process. And I do think we're gonna to continue to see this innovation from them in the future, which I am looking forward to. Thanks so much for watching and take care. If you're interested in learning malware analysis using Binary Ninja, make sure to check out our Introduction to Malware Binary Triage course at training.invokere.com.